Stop paying Apple for their extremely overpriced rip-off SSD storage upgrades. They're charging 1200 bucks for a four terabyte SSD. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create your own DIY SSD for only $500. Yes, there are other options like the OWC Envoy Ultra. This thing is 600 bucks, but it has some serious limitations and it's actually quite a bit bigger than this new enclosure from Trebulite. This is a Thunderbolt 5 SSD enclosure, which means it is crazy fast and we are combining it with literally the best PCI Express 4.0 SSD on the market, the Samsung 990 Pro. And right here on Amazon, you can see it's only $300. And if 500 bucks is too expensive, you could also go with the two terabyte version, which is $170 plus the enclosure, which is 200 bucks. Absolutely killer value. It's a lot lower than the other options on the market. So that's $370 compared to paying Apple 600 for two terabytes. And the beautiful thing is when you sell your MacBook down the line, you get to keep all this very expensive storage instead of losing all your resale value when you sell this laptop. Now getting started, the thing I really like about this Trebly Thunderbolt 5 enclosure is you get this zip up portable carrying case. You have a Thunderbolt 5 cable included and you have this little screwdriver and let's get this thing open. And one of the most unique things about this is that it actually has a cooling fan built in so you have active cooling with intake and exhaust vents. And it has a couple of ports right here, one to connect to your actual MacBook and one for extra power. This is basically for the future when there's eight terabyte drives. This helps with giving a little bit more stability. Now, since we got the SSD with the heat sink, we got to take this off. I got our little uh, iFixit kit right here. Let's go ahead, take out these screws. So here's the SSD with the heat sink taken off and then install the SSD just like like that, slot it in and screw in. And the last thing we do is we take this little thermal pad just to make sure we have a really nice connection and reinstall the screws. And there you go, our DIY four terabyte Thunderbolt 5 SSD is complete. It's more portable than the $600 OWC Envoy Ultra compared to 500, so cheaper, more portable. And now let's see if it's faster in real world transfer tasks. The first thing we gotta do is test this MacBook itself. This is the M4 Max, and this does come with a one terabyte SSD. So this is the faster version, but even with this one, it's still a thousand dollars to upgrade to four terabyte. And keep in mind, if you buy this instead for 500, four terabytes, you get an extra four terabytes on top of the 512 that you keep in your system, not just upgrading to four terabytes, which is pretty cool. So as you can see right here, we have our speeds of our internal drive, 6,300 in terms of the write speed and 5,163 for the read speed for the MacBook itself. So now let's first test the speed of the OWC. Envoy Ultra, so let's plug it in. And there you go, it looks like we're getting about 5,062 right, so a lot slower, almost 1,300 slower than the system itself, and 4,800 read, so just a little bit slower, not too bad, about 5,000 each on the OWC. Now switching over to our $500 DIY SSD, let's go ahead and plug it in. And by the way, it's really nice that you get a detachable cable, so it's a little bit more portable, and in the case that this gets frayed down damaged, the connector gets damaged, you're kind of screwed. It's a lot more difficult to get this replaced compared to just swapping out a cable. And look at that guys, 6,300 write on this DIY SSD and 5,800 read. Believe it or not, this $500 SSD setup is faster than the internal one terabyte storage on this MacBook Pro. So you're not getting limited in any way compared to this thing that is slower. So I'm already super impressed. I mean, 500 bucks for this. We just saved a thousand to $1,200 not paying for Apple storage. And this will last you forever. When you sell your laptop, you get to keep this thing, which is awesome. It's basically future proof. You can swap out the drive down the road if you have any issues. Amazing. 
But now it's time to test the SLC cache in a real world transfer test. We're gonna start off with the OWC drive. This right here is a folder that's exactly 300 gigabytes large, so almost a third of a terabyte. This is essentially how big some of our videos are for our YouTube channel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug this in. So right here I have my stopwatch, and what I'm gonna do is I can show you the OWC is empty right there. All I'm gonna do is basically drag and drop this 300 gig folder right onto the OWC drive, just like that. Start the timer, and you guys can see it is going. Look at that, five gigabytes per second, data written and read, that was fast. Look at that, five gigs, super fast. It says only about a minute left. I can't believe it is this fast. We're at about 58 gigs of, oh, wait a second, it just slowed down. 1.4, 1.6, 1.8, wait a second. That is the SLC cache, which basically means there's only about 50 gigabytes worth of super fast storage on this drive when you're making large transfers like this. That means only 50 gigs is super fast. The rest of the four terabytes is slower. It's slower than storage, which means it goes from five gigabytes per second down to only about 1.8. So this transfer just slowed down dramatically after 50 gigs was transferred. And that's actually a huge limitation because I find if you're buying a four terabyte drive, you're gonna have a lot of folders and files that are bigger than 50 gigs. And now that this is almost finished, I also wanna take my thermal cam and kinda check the temps of this drive. So let me lift it up, you guys can see. We're looking at about 31 degrees Celsius, so honestly, it's not too hot. Let's flip it to the other side. Looks like the other side's also about 31 degrees. So I'd say this is not too hot. And there you go, the OWC finished that 300 gig file transfer in two minutes and 35 seconds. And now for the moment of truth, is our cheaper $500 DIY SSD that's future-proof, upgradable with a cooling fan, with an external cable for a lot less than Apple storage, is this thing going to be faster than the more expensive OWC. Let's plug it right in like that, and let's drag and drop exactly like we did before. Timer has started. All right, oh, six gigs, yep. We went all the way up to six gigs, super fast. There we go, six gigs transfer. You guys seeing that? That is super fast, and look, we're now over 50 gigs. That means the SLC cache is higher, still running at six gigs transfer. Holy smokes, that is crazy fast. 5.5 right there. Wow, over 100 gigs, and we haven't hit a limit. Still six gigabytes transfer, over 150. We haven't hit a limit on this Samsung 990 Pro. That's why they say this is the best SSD NVMe, still over six gigs right there. I can't believe it, guys. This is crazy, crazy. Oh my gosh, we're almost done. Bam! We just finished. Holy smokes, guys. 56 seconds transfer, 300 gigs in 56 seconds. And the entire time we were at 5.5 to six gigs per second transfer speeds. We did not hit any kind of SLC cache limit. I can't believe this thing topped out at 50 gigabytes SLC cache. Did it slow down to 1.8? This thing didn't slow down at all. That means the SLC cache on this thing is even higher. Holy moly, guys, that was almost three times as fast. Three times as fast on the $500 DIY SSD compared to the $600 OWC, can you believe that? Guys, that was so fast that I didn't even get a chance to check the thermals, so how about I just drag and drop it again, and towards the end of this second transfer, let me just hit replace. All right, it's almost done, let me check the temp. Looks like we have 30 degrees Celsius, let me flip it over. What do we got on the back side? It's even cooler on the back, look at that. 30 degrees Celsius was the max on the treble, so it's running cooler. Obviously, it finished so fast that it didn't even have a chance to heat up, but that fan is helping. Yep, I can actually hear it. 
I could hear it running. All right, so now for my final test, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the reverse. Let me just delete this PC test folder off of the MacBook. And now I'm just gonna drag and drop it from the SSD to the desktop, start the timer. All right, it just finished a minute and four seconds doing the reverse from the SSD to the desktop, a minute and four. So let's test out the OWC. Once again, drag and drop from the OWC to the desktop, start the timer. Let's see how long this takes. Look at that, 5.8 gigs, nice and quick. Still at 5.8, look at that, 5.5, and boom, we just hit 50 gigs. And oh, look at that, this time doing the reverse, it's actually staying nice and fast. And that's because we're not writing to the drive that has an SLC cache limit, we're writing to the actual main laptop, so it is faster going reverse. That is an interesting takeaway. Oh, wow! This was actually slightly faster, a minute and two seconds, two seconds faster than the DIY SSD going in reverse, which is pretty interesting. But of course, there could be some margin of error there. The big takeaway here is that this trebly is $100 less expensive, and it's three times faster at transferring files, which is just crazy. And the beautiful thing about this is that for the first time ever, this is actually faster then the internal one terabyte SSD, and these SSDs are crazy fast. They're PCI Express 4 SSDs, just like this one. This one is just faster. We have never had that before. Usually if you buy an SSD, it's always like, well, you gotta sacrifice it being slower than the internal storage. Nope, not anymore. This is faster, and it's literally less than half the price compared to upgrading from 512 to four terabytes, and if it's too much to spend $500 for you, keep in mind 370 bucks to get two terabytes, still a killer deal compared to upgrading on the MacBook itself, which sometimes I see people buying these eight terabyte storage MacBooks, spending literally thousands and thousands of dollars, and then a year or two later, they're selling it on Twitter for a fraction of the price, and they never even used up a portion of that storage and it's gone, the resale value is gone. This thing you keep no matter what machine you have, and the beautiful thing is if you format this in XFAT, you take this and you transfer files from your Mac to Windows PCs, everything else, it's all going to be supported, which is beautiful. So with that said, we just built a killer DIY SSD. This thing is gonna last you forever. Only 200 bucks for the enclosure, which is absolutely a killer deal. So I'm gonna have the links down to this trebly enclosure, the Samsung 990 with all the deals and different SSD sizes down below. So save yourself some money. Don't pay Apple their rip off prices. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you did, go ahead and subscribe above and check out one of those two videos right there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.